Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host, as always, is... Butter, I'm Namio. Yay, we has a Namio. Yep. Yes, and we've got two weeks of show to talk about. Mainly because... Nurses fall, nurses fall, yay, 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 yay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because fuck yeah, nurses fall. I did a lot of live tumbling, which uh, translated, of course, to live tweeting when it was going on, and... <laughs> Oh, it's great, but but of course it doesn't last like the beginning to the end of a week. It's like started on Thursday and then into Tuesday, I think it was, and just oh, I wish they wouldn't split it up like that. I know that was kind of that was kind of annoying, but oh well. Yeah, and it was very obviously sponsored. <laughs> sponsored by Yo Play Greek. Yo yes. Play Greek. See our Yo Play. Greek. Yum! This is good yogurt. <laughs> yes, but yeah, and you know what? Even that, I could kind of understand because that kind of set up all all the extras to get to work and to actually work the show for those days. Just for that one day, you know, it's got to be expensive. And, and, I'm sure. and I'm sure they needed a little help because not everything can come from Disney or ABC or any other you know part of part of the thing. You know, I mean, they they've got to raise money somehow. Because while Disney and ABC, yeah, they have a lot of money, they don't have infinite amounts of money. Especially Why not? I have no idea. But especially not enough to spend that much on a daytime soap opera. Which is kind of sad. Uh, I mean, hell, if they had some of the budget, like even of Doctor Who, like even Doctor Who's budget, holy shit what they could do with it. <laughs> I know, right? Ugh! But before we hit the nurse's ball proper, there were a few things that were happening before the nurse's ball even started. Um, I'm gonna go with the shortest one because these guys, these two have nothing to do with the nurse's ball whatsoever. Carly and Franco. Yeah, they they find they find AJ's phone. They they discover hey, there's some shit on this thing about about you know AJ's last moments and. and in his confrontation with Ava, and they're like, okay, the, 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 the recording is a little... Yeah, yeah, conveniently, the recording cuts out in all of the parts where they could, they would find out what's actually going on. I was like, okay, there's... There's oops, convenience, and then there's that. Yeah, that's just a little bit, but it does give them an excuse to, to uh, evade Anna, who who's trying to find all the evidence, who's wanting to get the phone to see if there's that kind of evidence. Despite Franco at first being like, he's just turning into the cops, and Carly's like, dude, they're gonna put Sonny in jail. So, and, and so she convinces him to go with her to somewhere, probably to find our good friend Spinelli. Yay. And, and cause you know, yeah, because you know he's gonna be the one that's gotta decode the whole the, the, the recording thing. Because he's like the only tech everybody in this town knows. That's true. Although, <laughs> now that you mention that, why didn't they take it to Sam? You know, I don't know if Sam is that tech savvy. I know she's a PI and everything, but... But she, she would at least know where to look. Yeah. And she's in town. Although, if they had stayed in town, then we wouldn't have had the scenes with them joining the Mile High Club, so... Yes. Because <laughs> that was just... That was hilarious. Oh, God. Th that that was some ingenious uh, 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 comic relief right there. Because, you know, they're on the airplane, and Franco's like, have you ever joined the Mile High Club? And Carly's like, no. <laughs> I'm sitting there As thinking, okay, since she's been on the show, she's been with Sonny, she's been with Jax. Both of them could have, like, their own... And, and she's been with AJ. She's been with... People who could have their own private jets. And not once did she have sex on any of them? I call bullshit. I, I don't know, but so... Although I so, think, although I think it, there was some kind of clarification that not on, like, a commercial flight. 
Oh, okay, yeah, that's what she said. Not a, not on a commercial flight with people there, but like on a private plane. Yeah. So. So, so, so he's like, yeah, let's go in the bathroom and have sex, and she's like, okay, and uh, so like at first they're gonna, she wants them to get up and go together, but she's like, he's like, no, no, that that's too obvious, and she's like, okay, so first. He goes and waits in the bathroom, and she tries to get up, and uh, the stewardess makes her sit down. Uh, yeah. And so Franco comes back. He's like, "Come on, I was I was in there, and I was ready." And she's like, "Okay, let me let me go first this time." And she so she goes in, and some other guy cuts in front of Franco and goes in there. It's like, and she's like, ah! and it was so funny because Franco knew what was gonna happen, and he just sat back down and waited for her scream. <laughs> yeah. And that guy came out with a big smile on his face. It's yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy. Uh, and so finally, they're like, oh, basically, they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just the two of us go in together. And they came out with big smiles on their faces. <laughs> yes, and everybody else around them is like, uh huh. We know what you did. And I love the I love how uh, just not long after they went in there, the plane was was going to endure some turbulence. Yes. And it's like that's not turbulence. Franco just fucks that goddamn hard. <laughs> just 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 saying there. <laughs> oh well, and Ava. You know, Julian confronts Ava, and and that they have their thing. And Julian, of course, doesn't kill Ava for whatever because, you know yeah. for reason. Well, the it, um, uh, can I just kick Morgan in the face? Like I was really starting to like him for a while. Mm-hmm. I really was. I'll help you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, after the. After the whole thing with his dad was resolved, you know, he seemed to be actually kind of growing up. And, you know, he and Ava were really, like, uh, having a solid relationship until they decided that they needed to start mistrusting each other for no reason. Yeah. Which, whatever. Um, But, like, I get, I get him being super butthurt when she cheats on him with his dad. Like, I get that. But he goes and he tattles to Julian. Yeah. And it doesn't occur to him that this might put her life in danger. Uh, I, I think at that point he didn't care. Exactly, because he's stupid and childish and I want to kick him in the face. And so, you know, at some point after he tattles on her, he's like, wait... Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. I don't actually want her to die. And so he goes to see her right as Julian is about to pull the fucking trigger. Yeah, and gets him to stop. And, and Well, I think he hit him on the head or something. Um, yeah, it's like, punk, and then, holy shit, Morgan. And then, you know, he and Ava are talking, he's like, and she's like, why did you do that? And then he's like, I didn't think it would actually hurt you. And I'm like, what is the fuck? What the fuck did you think would happen? It's exactly like when uh, he was working against Sonny. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Michael found out and he was like, you're putting our father's life at risk. And Morgan's like, what? Mm -hmm. I don't, how? And I'm like, you fucking idiot. Yeah, it's like, (sighs) I'll give him one more. One more, one more. You know, you know, third time's a charm. If he does this again and he doesn't learn his lex, and then, then, um, yeah, it's just, oh, god damn it, dude! You'd think you would have learned, but at least this one wasn't quite as long and drawn out as when he betrayed Sonny. That's true. So, and and of course, once Julian is neutralized and subdued, and Morgan says his piece, Morgan leaves, and then. Julian, no, Ava gets the gun and turns the tables on Julian. Yeah. And suddenly Sean, who has been who has been told to take Ava to the airport and take her to the island. Yes, Sonny has an island. He's had an island for years. And he stops her from shooting him because, yeah, bone marrow. <laughs> yep. Uh, but not before, but once Julian's on his way out, he just casually says, yeah, Ava's the one who shot Olivia. Yeah. And Ava confirms it 
but then also says, yeah, I was kind of aiming for Franco, and, and Olivia got in the way. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so, but of course, nobody's telling Sonny yet. And speaking of Sonny, guess what came back to bite him in the ass? Everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause I'm just... Sonny... Like, Morgan gave him the opportunity to just tell Olivia the truth. And I don't know what made Sonny think he could get away with hiding it. Yeah, it's like... But, dude. you know... Yeah, because because all he did all he did was he he told Olivia that he had broken Morgan and Ava up, but didn't tell her how. And she's like, "Well, you know, whatever you did, I'm sure I'm sure it was the right thing to do because you know they shouldn't be together." But then you know, uh, Alexis was with Julian in the gallery when Morgan came in and uh, betrayed her. Uh, and, you know, she you know, was there when Morgan said, yeah, well, Ava cheated on me. And so, you know, Olivia and Alexis get to talking and Alexis mentions that. And so Olivia starts to put two and two together. And she confronts Sonny and says, did you sleep with Ava? And he can't, he can't, you know, He's, lie anymore. He, nope. He tries to squirrel out of it, and he can't. I and... do love I do love Olivia's attitude towards this whole thing. That, during this whole thing, though, it's like there's at one point where it's like I was expecting her to say, "Shut the fuck up, I'm talking." <laughs> it's like it's like, "Bitch, I'm talking. Shut up." <laughs> oh, but it's like, yeah, I I can't feel too bad for Sunny because yeah, you 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 see, Morgan was handing you a rope. You know, to, to, to just kind of, I guess, maybe help you out, may, I guess, I don't know, or give you the opportunity to hang yourself. You obviously chose the latter, and you spend most of the nurse's ball trying to talk to Olivia. And she's like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, uh-uh, no. Hmm. Just, just, no, 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 no. Hmm. Oh, and, and, oh, wow, let's see. But Sabrina eventually does find out about uh, Carlos's confession, and she goes to confront him and, and just gives him a big old "what the fuck." Yeah. And and it's left there. Well, because she she said she looks at it and she's like, "Yo, you swore on my baby's soul that you did not kill AJ Quartermain. Were you lying to me?" And he wants to tell her the truth so badly. Mm -hmm. But you know. Ava's got him by the short hairs and he's like, you know, I can't, you know, he can't tell her the truth because, you know, she's already been hit by a car and he's pretty sure Ava will, you know, go back to finish the job if he doesn't, you know, stick to the story that she invented for him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not, of course, he doesn't know that Sonny is squirreling her away in Puerto Rico. Or somewhere off of Puerto Rico. Uh, but, eh, you know. Uh, speaking of squirreling away, Luke. Oh, uh, beginning beginning of that, of, of, you know, right before the nurses fall, Luke's doing his thing. He's, in, you know, Ned comes in to confront him because I, I think it was, yeah, it was after that point when he and Alexis had their talk. And Ned's like, all right, I'll go give him my blessing, yada, yada, yada. Goes in, yes. sees Luke with a whole bunch of money. Yes. Ned thinks Luke is embezzling. But no, Luke, Luke plays this whole thing to him and Tracy, who happens to walk in on him and says, no, this is my money I'm putting into the company, blah, 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 which technically he's not wrong, but he didn't say where he got the money. For, well, he wasn't honest well, he, where he got the money from. Yeah, he, he was <laughs> like, I, I just kind of have money all over the place and I got it together because I love Tracy so much. Yeah. So much. Uh, it, it's like, okay, Luke, who are you? Where? What happened to the man who used to chip off bits of the Ice Princess diamond to get some money? Uh, yeah. wonder who has that diamond now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Luke still has it or, or if the Cassidines have it. I, I'm not sure anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, lordy. And, of course, the nurse's ball finally approaches. I, I think we can finally start easing more into it now. Mm -hmm. With uh, everybody, you know, setting up and rehearsing, Mister Marbles has been blackballed because. Well, I, 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 okay. This is my this is my first nurse's ball, so I don't know if Mister Marbles is a thing that's happened before, but like, he is. So, yeah, Mac has this puppet, and he's trying to be a ventriloquist, but he fucking sucks. Yeah, and like, then they tell him, and and Lucy tells him no. And he's like, he's like crushed, like, yeah, like super oh. crushed. It's like you almost feel bad for him, but at the same time, I did watch it last year, and what he did with Mister Marbles last year is all he did was use that as an excuse to tear into Frisco Jones, as in Felicia's ex-husband, as in Maxie's father, <laughs> because Frisco is a WSB agent, so of course he can't be there all the time. So, you know, and, and, and of course he takes the pot shots at, her beca at him because, well, you know, hey, last year he, went, he and Frisco were, were basically competing for Felicia. It's like, boys, 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 I'm going to choose the Aussie who sticks around. Oh, and speaking of Aussies who are sticking around, Levi. In <sighs> oh, I mean, I, I will give points to Levi, you know, he... Once the ball begins and Mac, he sees how Maxie is enjoying watching it on TV, he's like, you know what, let's go. Yeah, well, it, it uh, like, it, who who all is, go who goes with who to the ball is, is a big deal. And, yeah. like, for some reason they have, like, a red carpet, and I'm, like... I'm sorry, but it's, like, the saddest looking red carpet I've seen. <laughs> well, like, it's, it's not meant to be, like... I mean, it's obviously not Hollywood standard. I mean, keep in mind, this is yeah. upstate New York. Well, I'm like, why why have a red carpet at all? Like, if it's going to be this small and sad looking. But, uh, you know, you have, uh, let's see. Well, so you have Alexis going with Julian, naturally. Yes. Uh, and, of course, um, uh, the teens going together, um, TJ yes. and Molly. Um, and Elizabeth goes with Rick. Mm-hmm. Much to uh, Nicholas's surprise, he's like, wait, what, what the fuck, what? And he and, yeah. and at first he and Spencer are resigned to kind of staying at home. You know, until Spencer wa starts watching on the TV and Cameron mentions something about, you know, being at home in his Batman pajamas. And it's like, <laughs> Cameron, Cameron, well, he, like Cameron called it. Yeah, he did. It was funny. Uh, yeah, in your Batman pajamas eating pizza. <laughs> your dad. Uh, and well, and it's, it's kind of funny because uh, the other person who was really surprised by Elizabeth going with Rick was Britt. Yeah. Because Britt's sitting at home with Brad uh, watching the red carpet. And, it like, I love the way the two of them are together because, uh, like, you, they're kind of, odd, like, um, uh, hard times besties. <laughs> you know, they, oh yeah, the both of their lives kind of suck right now, and so it just kind of has brought them together. And, oh yeah, uh, and it's kind of funny because uh, Brett's watching the red carpet, and like Brad says something about it, and uh, she's like, "I would have thought you'd be into this," and Brad's like, "That's an offensive stereotype," and then he's, he gets sucked in, and and it's and it's so funny because like the two of them are because. Sam goes with Silas, obviously, mm -hmm. and she falls down on the red carpet and, like, <laughs> Brit and Brad are just, like, the bitch twins. They're sitting there laughing their asses off. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I, although I will give how they did uh, Levi with this a little bit of credit, it seems they were using him to kind of deconstruct the whole idea behind the nurse's ball. And, and other similar events. It's like, it's like, well, you don't want to go to that because it's just big pharmacy doing this blah, 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 blah. And and it's like, yeah, okay, it's true, but it's also people coming together, giving them money. The money does go to a cause. Yeah. You know? So, you know, the money is going where it's supposed to go. And people get together. They have fun. And they honor memories of other people that either mm -hmm. couldn't be there or people of days gone by and, and that sort of thing. 
So it's a it's a big event. Money goes to a good cause, and people get up there and they get to perform and have all sorts of fun. Oh my God, that's the best part of the nurses' ball—the musical numbers. <laughs> yes, I mean they start off they start off with like Obrecht coming in and just just stealing the opening number. <laughs> like literally stealing because uh, the uh, nurses were supposed to do the opening number, and they actually start. Mm-hmm. And then Obrecht, like, crashes it and does this, like, because c- she had been told that she couldn't do a number. And she's like, but I am a fantastic singer. And to her credit, she, she is. in fact is. Uh, yes. And so she does this gigantic cabaret ca- cabaret number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she, yeah, she does a modified version of Zilkoman from Cabaret. And she does a really good job. She does. And, like, and sh- and it ends, and there is silence in the yeah. crowd. Yeah, absolute silence. And uh, she just stands up there, and uh, she's like, "Oh, thank you, thank you," as if as if everybody is cheering for her, like completely nonplussed. I mean, just <laughs> it all just washes off of her back. It's so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's. That was the thing, and and I actually follow some of the cast members on Twitter, and they have said, you know what, it was hard as fuck not to fucking clap for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Obrecht, Obrecht, uh, you know, before the ball even, you know, she was talking to the nurses, and she mentioned that you know she's been bankrolling the hospital and the nurses and and helping with the nurses' ball and everything, you know, or at least you know to the point well, to where she... there could be a nurses' ball because there are now nurses, you know. Well, and she she said that the only reason that uh, well, uh, excuse me, the main reason that she was given the chief of staff position was because she bankrolled the hospital and got them out of debt. Which I'm like, there has to be more to it than that, but whatever. Um, oh, there probably is. Uh, <laughs> hmm. And uh, so, and, and she keeps like, is she can't. She kept like uh, threatening to can't basically cancel the nurses ball mm-hmm. if people didn't do what she wanted, and then like nothing actually came of that. Yeah, because Obrecht, as much of a bitch as she can be, I don't think she's that heartless. Yeah, well, obviously she's not. So, so, uh, so let's see who else. Oh, and then um, back to the red carpet. Uh, Felix and Lucas both kind of meet outside, just coincidentally and they're both you know they're alone and they're like well why don't we write you know walk the red carpet together and so they do and then brad's like no <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and i think it was that point brad's like fuck it we're crashing the ball yeah and so they you know he and Britt decide that they're going to go to the ball and um then uh you know nicholas and spencer are sitting at home because nicholas doesn't feel like going but uh Spencer decides that he is going to get Emma back. And so he calls his grandmother and he convinces his dad um, to to let them go to the ball. And Nicholas is like, okay, fine. And so they go and, you know, uh, and it's kind of funny because, you know, one of the first things that happens when Nicholas and Spencer get to the ball is Spencer sees Brit and he runs up to her and gives her a huge hug and tells her how much he misses her. Yeah, it's like, aww. And she's like, yeah, I miss you too. And they're really sweet. Yes. And, so and uh, you know, Brett and Nicholas actually wind up sitting together. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, and actually kind of talking for the first time since he dumped her. Yeah. And, and she kind of hammers at it, you know, I love you, I miss you, please, you know, what do I have to do for you to forgive me? And, uh, you know, basically he he's kind of stone-faced through it. Yeah. And even even uh, though I'm sure everybody can see on his face, yeah, he fucking misses Brit. Yes. But the, the one thing, you know, you know, there was the lies. The lies is the thing yeah. that pushed him. You know, said he said, "No, no, 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 no." It's a big lie. You know, I I could get over that 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 you you know let your mother talk you into stealing my my nephew from from my sister. That's that's one thing. You know, 
but it's, you it's fucking lied about to me it. about it. Yeah. Because, no, that's, that's you know, the part. Yeah, because keep in yeah. mind, he is a Cassidyne. That family has more skeletons in their closet than there was gold in the California hills. <laughs> so, so it's like he doesn't have much room to speak of. Yeah. You know? And Nicholas is not exactly completely innocent either. So, yeah, they both come from crazy families. This seems like they're a match made in heaven. But it's the lies that got to him, and he just couldn't handle it. And I yeah. honestly can't blame him there. Yeah, me either. You know, I mean, as... and the thing is, and the thing is, he told her that when they were together. Mm-hmm. He and he did it more than once. He said, "You know what? Whatever you've done in the past, we can get past that. Just don't lie to me." Yeah. And then she kept lying. Yeah, that that's one of those things. It's like. It's almost like a childlike mentality in that sense. I, I say childlike mentality because uh, we have like six kids here, uh, four of which my parents are, are foster parents of, and then my cousins too. And I've noticed that these kids have not grasped the concept of just tell us the truth. Yeah, we might be a little upset at the time, but it would be a lot worse if you lied to us and we found out about it. Yeah. You know, just, I don't I don't know. I don't know what what age you have to be before you kind of like have that sink into your head cuz I remember doing I remember lying about stupid pointless things when I was a kid. Oh yeah. And Definitely. like you know, in retrospect going, why did I lie about that? Like like I thought I would get in trouble if I told the truth or, you know, I uh, was afraid they would, or if I did, it was be, if it was something stupid I did, I was afraid they would make fun of me, which of course they would, because that's what my family does. Um, <laughs> but, you know, st- like stupid, stupid shit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so, so yeah, the first, the first number was, was Obrecht, and then they moved from there into uh, Kiki. Yes. Who has a holy shit amazing voice. I was just like, damn. Yes, and and by the way, all of the songs from the Nurses Ball, they're on iTunes. Oh, sweet. I gra- oh. I grabbed up uh I ra- grabbed up Raise Your Glass that Kiki did. I also grabbed up uh, the tune that Luke ended up doing. And I also grabbed the uh the tune that Eddie Main slash Ned Ashton did. Yeah. Oh god, I love those songs. I I'm kinda and I'm working with a very limited, uh, you know, spoiling budget. It was like three bucks, <laughs> so I kind of blew my wad a little early because some of the later numbers. Oh my god! I, I wish I'd saved some money for it. But, <laughs> but speaking, going back to Luke again, real quick. Michael, they do tell Michael what the hell hell is going on with Luke. Oh, that's right. Because before the nurses ball, Ned shows up at Michael's apartment, and Kiki's there, and Ned's. And that's like, you know, Kiki, you need to help me. I, I need you and Michael to help me um, stop Luke. And uh, Kiki keeps trying to tell him, you know, Michael doesn't need to know about this. We were trying to stop. And Michael comes in and, you know, to their to her credit, Kiki's like, you know what? OK, we'll just tell you. And and they tell him everything. Yeah. And and they explain um yeah, you know, they didn't that she didn't want him to know about it because he, you know, AJ had just gotten shot the first time that Luke broked her and you know, she didn't want him to have to deal with that on top of everything. And here's the difference mm-hmm. between Michael and Morgan. Michael listens. He does not get mad at her for for keeping it from him. He understands her reasoning. Yeah. And when he finds out that she was leaning on Morgan, he does not get jealous. Yes, Michael is a great guy. Joe, you know, he he understands. He trusts Kiki. Mm-hmm. And you know, and you know, he understands that you know she and Morgan were close before, and it you know it makes sense that you know Morgan would be someone that she would trust. Yeah. With this, you know, while they're, you know, they're trying to, you know, give Michael less of a burden. And it was 
like that level of maturity from Michael was something that I really appreciated. Yes. <laughs> I mean, although to be, although there is also you could tell that he and Morgan are brothers because what was his initial knee jerk reaction to Luke? Go beat the shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can't blame him. I, my, mm-hmm. That would be my initial reaction too. Like, like if, like if it happened to my girlfriend, I would want to go and just, you know, rearrange his anatomy and put his testicles where his eyeballs are. Yeah. Um, and so, but you know, they, they talk it over and they come up with a plan, and, um, and you know, I, I was expecting, uh, them to, you know, try and and trap Luke again. But they didn't, and I and, think and that we'll, and, 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 yes. and we'll get to that in a minute. But so, so yeah, the second number was Kiki and uh, a bunch of other people doing "Raise Your Glass," and Kiki was fantastic. Yes. I mean, that actress, she mm-hmm. I, she could sing, and I loved, uh, I loved, uh, I think it was uh, Elizabeth and Felix like interjecting like little lines from from the song, mm-hmm. and it was really cute. Yes. <laughs> and so okay, and weren't. Weren't, uh, were Cameron and Emma next, or was that? Now, Cameron and Emma came a while. I think they were, okay. I think they were after the weekend break. I can't, I can't remember all of the stuff in order. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but among the, among the other numbers, I think the one, I know, no, I think it was Ned who was after, after Akiki with his song, and it was great. That, that is the kind of like rock style that I I absolutely love, and 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 of course naturally I would grab that from iTunes and also his band Kurth and Taylor, they they actually have a greatest hits album up on iTunes. Oh, that's so, funny. Yes, it is, and and they they are legitimately legitimately good songs, yeah. so I, I encourage you to go check that out. But um, he did this number with this woman, you know, I guess just. Some woman that just like, hey, you know, I'm touring with you, we're part of the band, whatever. And goddamn, she was hot. <laughs> <laughs> you, of course, I'm going to comment on that. <laughs> of course you are. Uh, but but they, the two of them, they had the chemistry, everything going on. It was awesome. And then Luke gets up there, and as part of his surprise for Tracy, key term, part of his surprise. Yes. And um, and I didn't recognize the number. At first, but the number is from. I am getting it up here right now on my iTunes playlist because this is one of the other ones that I actually downloaded. Uh, well, I say downloaded, got from iTunes, you know that sort of thing. Uh, doop 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 doop. Where is it? Where is it? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh well, but anyways, the song is called "I Am What I Am." And if I can remember my research right, it is f- actually is from a Broadway show. I'm 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 also live getting the thing. I'm I'm doing what Holly would do on some of my shows, but it is <laughs> but it is from a music. It totally, uh, the, I, I speak English well tonight, so <laughs> words say talk. But the song is called "I Am What I Am." And the song is, was originally introduced in the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical La Cage of Follies. And oh, it, yeah. Yes. La Cage of Falls. La Cage of Falls. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and it's the finale number of the first act performed by the character Ablin, whatever, Schleilhofen. And the song was composed in 1983 by an openly gay man. And yeah. – and it's and it's become like a like a rallying cry. At least according here on Wikipedia, it says that it's it's become a rallying cry for the gay pride movement, along with uh, "I Will Survive." Okay. So and so it's it's not exactly a a a an obscure song. I didn't know about it because you know I don't I don't encompass everything you know having to do with the stage or anything, but it's pretty it's pretty good. And Luke did it. Fantastically, he did. Oh, uh, mm. and and then comes the other surprise, which was just a stroke of absolute genius. Because like, at the nurses' ball, in front of everyone, 
on TV, he says, Tracy, let's get married right now. Lucy can officiate. Everyone's already here. Yeah. So he, he's got the right idea there. <laughs> Tracy, of course, says yes, even though Ned tries to talk him out of it, talk, talk her out of it. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, no, fuck you. I'm marrying him. Stand up with me. Okay. Yeah, so he stands with her. Lulu stands with Luke and... So they get married, they're all happy, and then after the after they get married, they drop the bombshell. Yeah, like... I, I, yeah, it it was like during the commercial break uh, for the because they you know they have commercial breaks uh, in between the ball numbers because they're on TV, and yeah. they go out in the hallway and they're you know basically uh, Luke is all is is kind of doing a victory lap, mm-hmm. and all trying to be like. Uh, you know, you know, I I hope we can be family. Blah 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 blah. And Ned comes up, and uh, he's like, yo, you know. So he said something about ELQ surviving, and he said, uh, by the way, <laughs> by the way, Luke, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and and there, it looks like uh, you can't fire me. Only the CEO can fire me. And Tracy's like. Yeah, and that's me. And Ned's like, not anymore. It's like, Seek, super secret emergency family vote. Yeah, and, and so, and it turns out, and, and she's like, well, who's the CEO? And Michael pipes up. He's like, I am. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's a, it's a, it was a stroke of absolute genius because, you know, by doing that, you know, they protect ELQ from Luke, and they don't have to, they they can just let Tracy make this mistake. Yeah, you know they don't have to convince her of anything. They don't have to talk her out of anything. They they can just be like, you know what, Tracy, if you want to be with Luke, go be with Luke. But he cannot touch ELQ anymore, and neither can you. That's that's the trade off. There you go. And uh, and it's it's. It's absolutely genius, and you can see Luke just like <laughs> so goddamn pissed that he has been <laughs> outsmarted. <laughs> oh and, yes, and you know, even though we we obviously know that this is not Luke, mm-hmm. uh, it speaks volumes about uh, the real Luke that everybody who is a shareholder at ELQ or, or someone who can cast a vote mm-hmm. voted to put what, what a 23 year old guy, mm-hmm. you know, who has never, uh, you know, never been in charge of the company before mm-hmm. who was, you know, worked with AJ for a while. And that was it chose to put him in charge of ELQ mm-hmm. over Tracy because they didn't want Luke. Like, yeah. that's... I mean, that just speaks volumes. It really does. It, it Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's all I can really say. It's like, yeah. And all of the name it's, dropping going on, it's like, yeah. It, it's pretty much, mostly at this point, Tracy's kids and granddaughter. Because uh, Dylan is... Dylan is her other son, and Brooklyn is uh, Ned's daughter. Mm-hmm. So it's like two generations of fuck you going right to Tracy. Yeah. Well, technically to Luke, but it's through Tracy. Luke, yeah. yeah, and, and you know, Luke, Luke is just dumbfounded. He's like, they can't do that. And Tracy's like, they can, and they did. Yeah. And you know, she just kind of accepts it. You know, she know she knows how this works. And, you know, that this is how she unseated AJ. And, uh, like, she's actually pretty impressed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she, yeah. she actually sits there at, at, at one point and she says, you know, that was such a quarter main move. Standing up for me at my wedding and then, you know, a few minutes later ousting me as CEO. Daddy would be proud. <laughs> yeah, Edward would have. I love Luke's comment. How could you do this to me? And Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, 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 it's starting to come apart. The cracks are appearing in in fake Luke's yeah. armor. There, it's starting to appear. Just need and it. So, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you know, uh, <laughs> and it's kind of funny because uh, T- 
turns out, uh, you know, basic, and, and, you know, they're standing there in the aftermath of that. And, and, oh, and, uh, you know, Michael comes up and is like, you know, you should have thought of that before you groped my girlfriend. And, you know, Tracy's like, she's lying! She's lying! But, you know, she can't do anything about it. And uh, as they walk away, <laughs> she she turns to Luke and she hugs him and she says, we still have each other. And you can just see the look of on his face. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you can even, they even give you a peek into his mind right before he says the nuptials and everything. He's looking at all of the titties out there. Yes. Every last one of them from Alexis to, to Jordan to Kiki to everybody. Everybody of legal age, really. Yes. Because I don't, I don't think he'd be looking at Molly's. Not, just, I would hope just, not. No. That would be even creepier considering the actress is actually really close to the character's age. Uh. <laughs> that would be even creepier. But mm-hmm. um, but to get back to the musical acts for a little bit now, uh, they, they had the, the the magic Milo and the magic wands <laughs> second year oh in a God, row. Oh my God, that was amazing. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I, I, I You know, beefcake's uh. not my thing, but I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was and it was so funny because uh, my dad and I had been um, marathoning GH that day, and my mom got home from work right in the middle of that number, <laughs> and so she walks in the door and there's all these like stripping hot stripping dudes on the on the screen, and she's like, "Well, I came home with the right time." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so and so let's see, it was um, it was Nathan. It was Milo, Michael, uh, uh, Felix, Lucas, Felix, I think Felix, Lucas, Lucas, and TJ. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like, I was, I was a little weirded out by that. I'm like, okay, like I, I'm pretty sure TJ's character is like 18 at this point, mm-hmm. but it's a little weird <laughs> to have him. Up Always. there doing the stripper act and like have Molly screaming, "Take it off!" <laughs> oh God, the 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 fan page. The, the, the... Yeah, I saw a little bit of rage about that. I was like, "Ew!" <laughs> it's like, come uh, on. Which I'm Jeez. like, okay. If the problem isn't with Molly saying "Take it off" because it's her boyfriend. Of course, she's gonna say that. The problem is with TJ being in the number in the first place. <laughs> that I I didn't think that was so awkward. I was like, okay, he's of age the characters of age at this point he wants to do it okay sure you know of course his mom's in the audience yeah which true. makes it a little awkward but that's okay although i think i think lucas was in the number two and i don't remember if bobby was in the audience mm. uh she she was she was at the ball i don't know if she was in the audience she probably would have thought it was funny um yeah just yeah, like oh, oh, we forgot to talk about but bobby mm-hmm. decided to go to the ball with Scott Baldwin. Yeah, who is trying to get over Lucy. Still. And, oh, lordy. And one thing that set and, off and, a whole bunch of bull... A whole, no, I say bullshit. But a whole bunch of shit that, that just... Not only... It takes the, the nurse's ball tradition and turns it into a more dramatic spin. Because what, uh, what uh, Spencer okay, had yes, done... Yeah. <laughs> What what Spencer had done, he had called I I forget the group. Well well he had Leslie call the group. Uh, I forget what uh, their name Passenger? I think so. But... Is that the name of the group that did that song? Uh, player. player. Player, excuse me. There you go. But yeah, he had he had Leslie call in a favor with them and and have them interrupt um Cameron and and um Emma's Emma. tango. And and just have this song performed. Of course, Spencer's not the one doing the singing, which is well, hey, you know, it, it's it's short notice. I can I, I I can let that slide. And not only does he use that to kind of catapult himself to say, hey, you know, I'm sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Well, yeah. The the, the song is is baby come back, and it's all you know, apology. It's an apology song. Is like you. Know, I was wrong, and I can't live without you. And you have all of these former couples around the room just, yes. like, staring at each other. Uh, yeah. You know, Scott is staring at, at Lucy. Uh, Britt is staring at Nicholas. Uh, Brad's staring at Felix. Brad's staring at no, Felix and no, Lucas. Luke, yeah, well, yeah. and Felix. And it, it causes several things to happen. For one, Brad gets up there and sings his own damn song. 
which Brad can sing. He can. Boy can uh, sing very, very well. <laughs> well, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it does set off several things because uh, someone had had said to Brad, I forget who, was basically like, "You want him? Go and fucking get him." I think that was. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so when one of the um, one of the acts uh, doesn't make it, uh, Brad goes back there and he sings a song to Lucas that again is all like. Uh, it basically the same theme, baby come back. Um, but uh, before the ball started, Lucy and Felicia had been backstage talking, and Lucy was lamenting about Scott, and, uh, and because we- it's and and then you know because of timing, uh, Kevin walked in when uh, she was saying you know we can't let let Kevin find out. And can't find out what. Like, yeah, can't find out what. And so Felicia just on the spot's like, Lucy has a big uh, surprise number planned for you. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, and after he leaves, Lucy's like, why did you say that? And he's like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I panicked. I panicked. And so, and so you know, after, after the second or third uh you know, I want you back. Song was performed. Scott, being the ass hat that he is, uh, even though Lucy has told him multiple times no, he goes backstage while she is, you know, in her underwear, you know, in between dresses, and it starts like chasing her and telling her, you know, we belong together. We belong together. And, you know, she's like, you know, I care about you. And he's, you know, and he corners her and gets her to kiss him. And then right the as the curtain comes up. up. Yes. And everybody's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I have to say, like, the, the way they did it was, was pretty, was, was pretty brilliant. Because she's, she tried to spin it. She's like, hey, this was the surprise act. It's a tradition. I'm in my underwear. And Kevin leaves. Yeah, and of course she chases after him. They have this fight, and he's... And I have to admit, this is one of those times where it seems like soap operas and internet memes just kind of crossed. You had one job, Lucy! (laughs) One job! Yeah, I did. I did catch that, and I thought it was funny. (laughs) I mean, and I know it's like a serious moment. It's it's a very serious moment. And And even outside of that line, you know, that, that kind of threw me a little bit, it's it's very well done. You know, yes. both both of the actors doing terrific jobs. It's just that one line, just just like all of a sudden, oh shit, internet meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one job, Lucy. Oh god. So you know, they they storm off with each other, and Felix is having to take care of the rest of the show. Because uh, and, and oh, speaking of which, this this oh, the worst case of blue balling I I have seen on the show yet. Because uh, I think it was over the weekend, one of the previews for Monday was uh, the arrival of Blackie Parrish, who was originated – the role of which was originated by John Stamos. Oh. Yes. So it's like, oh, God, are we going to have John Stamos on here? Oh, God, that's going to be great. Comes Monday, she, the, the clip – you know, that actual clip plays, and he didn't show up. Yeah. And it's like, God damn it. And yeah, that was the, that was the number that uh, Brad took over for, and so uh, you know, so Lucy runs out, and at this point she does not give a shit about the rest of the show because her marriage is crumbling. Yeah. And so Felix, being the wonderful person that he is, he jumps up and he's he starts uh, doing the the hosting duties mm-hmm. uh, to try and save it, and he I thought he did a good job. Oh yeah, and, uh, and but I know yeah, one point. And, I know at one point Mac tried to get up there with Mr. Marbles. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, that was so funny. It was. Uh, and, and and it was yeah. It was it was sometime after um, the uh, Magic Milo number because. Uh, Epiphany got up there. She, Epiphany, she's all like, "Fuck this!" Rips it, rips Mr. Marbles out of Mac's hands and just stomps him and and just you know yes. kills him. And, and backstage, to Milo thunderous was, applause. Yes. To, like everybody is applauding, and Mac is so crushed, and he's like, "Oh!" And I, I think I was here. I, I think well, while we were watching, I was like, "Mr. Marvels, no!" <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> like he was, he was legitimate. 
legitimately heartbroken. It's like, oh, uh, although it so, does seem like Epiphany may have scored a couple of points with Milo, though. Yes, she did, because backstage, Milo, Milo's like, I just want to thank you for doing what all of us wanted to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, like, hey, Milo, you might you might have yourself a girlfriend after all at some point. That'd be kind of cool. Mostly off screen, like your brother. But, you know, hey, have yourself a girlfriend. <laughs> So. Oh, and oh, Lordy, what, where else? Where else have we not gone with, with the nurses? Well, oh well. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so, okay. Oh. No, no. So, okay. Sometime after uh, his number, Brad goes out, and Lucas and Felix are are talking at the bar, and uh, Brad just comes up, uh, whirls Lucas around, and kisses him. And it's like holy shit, and of course Bobby's like right there. She's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and and Lucas, he's kind of pissed about it because yeah, and uh, it's like, dude, what the fuck? And uh, you know, Brad's basically like, you know what, we should be together, blah 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 blah. And Lucas is like, no, that's not gonna happen. And he's like fishing for excuses. And he's like, cause me and Felix are together. <laughs> Leading Felix to be like, wait, what? Wait, wait, what? What? And this happened? Felix, Felix backs him up because why the hell not? And as they walk away, he's like, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy. Ah. Oh. I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't want Lucas and Felix to end up together. I really don't. I. I don't think they're right for each other. But also, I want Lucas and Brad to be together because I think they're a really good couple. Oh. Oh, I smell a shipper. <laughs> Ship her on deck. I, yeah, yeah, that's me. Um, <laughs> well, uh, also, but then I'm like, guilty of it too. I mean, hi, Brad. Hi, hi, uh, Britt and Nicholas. Yeah. Oh, which, speaking of, love the other two. Uh, which speaking of, of Britt, we barely touched on like the whole uh, Britt, Nate, and Obrecht family dynamic. Because, hmm. you know, the, all three of them, they met up with the ball. And of course, of course, Nathan is still a little, really kind of cold towards her, you know, because yeah, as far as he knows, this is just some strange woman, you know, who is supposed to be his birth mother, who is also a, 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 an evil scientist. But yeah. yeah, but you know, he he and Britt have really settled into their roles as brother and sister mm -hmm. uh, really quickly, because it's kind of funny, because like, she's already teasing him like a brother, because she she sees him uh, looking at Maxie. Yeah. And she comes over and she's like, uh, so how long have you been jonesing for Maxie? Get it, Maxie and, and it's Jones? Like, and it's like, ah, <laughs> I aud I so audibly groaned on that one. Ah, <laughs> it's, it's, like, yeah. it's like it's like really. <laughs> but yeah, they, you know they're they're sitting there and and they're they're talking and they're having a a good time and then Obra comes in and ruins it because she's like it's it is so nice to see my children laughing together and Britt's like you know what. Fuck you, basically. <laughs> she's like, you know, you, because basically what she says is, you know what, mom, you shit on me throughout my entire life because you were angry that I wasn't a boy. Not my fault, by the way. And meanwhile, you had a son that you gave up. What the hell is up with that? And of course, Oprah doesn't answer. Yeah, because it's like <laughs> armor piercing. Boom. Yeah, because that that is the side of Obrecht that I kind of want to see a little bit more of. Because yeah. like, you know she's she's you know things are starting to hit her like oh shit what the fuck did I do? Uh. It's, it's gonna be really interesting because you know obviously they teased that Victor Cassidyne is Nathan's father, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be interesting to see uh, when they go into that backstory and explain what she was so afraid of and why she was so certain that she had that she had to give uh Nathan slash James up uh rather than let Victor Cassidy know that he had a son. Yeah. It could be I'm willing to bet this is probably gonna tie in around the time that that Victor and his brothers were, were working towards, you know, taking over the world. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And who knows? It may have happened like not long after Victor left to go work with Mikos, and so you know things things and stuff happen. So for all she knew, he could have been dead, and then 
at some point come back into her life and holy shit you're actually alive i thought i thought you were put in prison by that by by that robert scorpio fellow well i was but i got out after a few years <sighs> and then eventually became yeah. the head of the wsb <laughs> <laughs> because of reasons yes uh, which uh, and, have yet uh, to be revealed yeah yeah and so uh she once again hijacks the show and does this really sweet ballad singing singing to her kids and she kind of wins them over and she it's basically an apology song saying you know uh i know i wasn't the greatest parent but that doesn't mean i don't love you yeah. And uh, you know, I, I basically I want a chance to start again. And it like it's it is actually super sweet. Yeah. And nobody can resist Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh god, so so that that was great. And I think it was at that point Felix is is realizing things are not going the way he is that oh, the cards are saying. And, and he forgot- just it's this he just has this whole attitude of, of just you know announces something 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 else happens tears up the cards like i'm done with this shit yeah and it was because because when he introduced her the card said adele dizine which i thought was hilarious yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like john travolta is never gonna live that down and nor should he <laughs> because oh, that no. was goddamn ridiculous yeah, just 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 a little bit there, just just a little bit. Oh, so <laughs> and then like I, I don't know. It's like I get it's, sorry tangent. Yeah. Like the John Travolta thing. Like I get that it's the Oscars and the Oscars are boring, and I'm sure pretty much everyone there is stoned out of their goddamn minds <laughs> in order to get through it. But he had one job, like get, getting back. <laughs> You had one job, and you fucked it up on national TV. There you go. Because you were either too lazy or too stoned. Yeah, well, well, at least he only fucked up a name on TV. I mean, Lucy fucked up her entire marriage on TV, so. That's, that is a valid point. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. And, and so, of course, you know, I, when after the final number, which I will get to in just a moment, when everybody's leaving, you know, Nathan offers Britta right home, and then she's like, "How about how about both of us?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. So it was that was that was a sweet thing that happened, and the final number, which happens at the same time where uh, Patrick and Sabrina are, you know, they're sitting there with with their son. I don't remember. I, did they give him a name? I know they talked about Not it. Not yet. Not yet. They, okay. they, they were talking about needing to give him a name when he started having respiratory trouble. And yeah. they got and they got kicked out of the uh, quote-unquote NICU. I, I'm sorry. Having worked in a hospital, that is not a fucking NICU. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, it's just a room. It's a room next to the nurse's station. That is not the fucking NICU. Yeah. And, like, putting on gloves and one of those little paper gowns does not suddenly make it a fucking NICU. Like, that, like, the setup they have there is so goddamn unsanitary. It's a good goddamn thing that that baby is an obvious doll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so, yeah, they, they get kicked out because, you know, the, the doctors need to work. And, like, they keep trying to, like... G- they're both like Sabrina, you're a nurse, Patrick, you're a doctor, and they both keep like trying to go and get in the middle of what the doctors are doing. It's like get the fuck out of there. You know better than this. Yeah. Although I will give them a l- only a little bit of slack because, you know, they are more emotionally involved than most other doctors and nurses at this point. So, so Yes, but still. I mean, like, still stupid. The, the, they, they know they can't do anything. You know, all you could do at that point is get the fuck out of the way. Let the professionals do their goddamn job. Yes. Oh, and while while they're sitting there looking over their son, they start, you know, at the same time that they're looking over that, Epiphany starts the final song number, which is is the same song that she sang at Patrick and Sabrina's, you know, aborted wedding, and the way they did it here with the instrumentation and everybody coming together and like everybody like like most everybody from the ball coming to see Patrick and Sabrina because it was 
because I, I think Epiphany did mention that that you know yeah they were there you know with their baby you know and you know basically their baby's fighting for his life that's why they couldn't be here even though they really wanted to be here and they're big supporters mm-hmm. of the ball and so a lot of people they just took the ball to them mm-hmm. seeing the, the singing the song the entire time I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie I teared up. It was it was a very sweet scene. It was just oh, oh I'm almost tearing up right now. <laughs> oh dear. So oh. so oh wait we we missed we missed one other thing during the ball. Oh what did we miss? after um player performed Emma Emma is backstage yes and Spencer sees her and it's so cute because he like. He runs across the floor and like slides across on his knees. He's like, "Baby, come back! I was wrong, and I just can't live without you." And it's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was impressed at that slide. I mean, he he did a good job. But he's like, he he talks to her and he begs her, and uh, basically she's like, you know what? Okay. I forgive you for being mean to me, but Spencer, I'm with Cameron now, and you just need to accept that. It's it's so funny, like, Emma is like this little kid, and they give her, like, these super adult lines, yeah. uh, you know, just, just like, dripping with, with worldly wisdom about, you know, you know, yeah. Yeah, this I'm I'm with Cameron now. It's it's our relationship, and you know basically what what was between us is in the past, and and you need to let go. <laughs> it's like, oh Jeebus, could, could they can they even write for kids on a soap opera? Uh. I don't know. Like I find it adorable, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I, I it, it's 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 weird. It's I don't I don't get some a lot of the hate that I see going towards it. But it's just one of those things. It's just uh, it is what it is. It's still adorable, yeah. so it works. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. So uh, any, meanwhile, um, <laughs> apparently, uh, when they went home from the ball mm-hmm. uh, to have their wedding night, Luke just got drunk and fucking passed out. It's like. Ah, dude, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and so, you know, they wake up the next morning and Tracy's like, we didn't even get to consummate our marriage. And Luke is still, like, obsessing about her getting ELQ back. And she's like, you know, you know, basically, you know what? Let's worry about that later. And for now, let's have some sex. And uh, he's obviously <laughs> as interested in sexing her as he is in sexing a rock. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and so, like he, and so he pictures her as Kiki going, "Come on, big man, you know, you can just think about me the whole time." And he's like, "Don't mind if I do." <laughs> yeah, it's like, damn. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and so, let's see, so there's that. Ah. Uh, actual and... Kiki is uh, with Michael, who is uh, and and you know they're they're talking, and uh, Michael's kind of having uh, second thoughts about you know maybe maybe Ned should be doing this instead of me. He's running LQ before, and Kiki's like, you know what? This is a this is a way of honoring AJ's memory. Is you know. Taking the company and doing with it what you guys always wanted to do. Yeah. And it it's so sweet the way those two support each other. Like, they have so, a much better relationship than most of the adults on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, just, just a little bit there. Oh, but some of the other stuff that we kind of did gloss over a bit, like, like during the ball, you know, Dante finds out what Sonny had done, and Dante basically gives his dad, "What the fuck?" Well, he he doesn't find out everything, does he? I, I think he just found out that uh, Sonny cheated on Olivia. Mm-hmm. I think so. And, and but it still earns Sonny a what the hell. Yeah, and and Sonny Sonny tries to patch things up with Olivia, and she is having none of it, and she storms out. Mm-hmm. Which you know what? Good for her. Yes. Um, <laughs> Oh, and, and some of the aftermath of the ball. Now, naturally, we all know that Lucy's marriage just pretty much went to shit right there in front of everybody. And afterwards, Kevin and Mac went to the floating rib, and 
and Lucy and Felicia are, are just down at the at the Metro Court bar because eh, whatever. And of course, Felicia and Mac are comforting their best friends. And Scott walks into the floating rib, and Kevin just just decks Scott. After, Which, after... I'm sorry, Scott was like super surprised at that. I'm like, what the fuck did you expect? You you slept with his wife. And then you came in spouting off, we love each other, we've always loved each other. Boom! Yeah, and yeah, and you call, you know, he is Lucy's husband, and you called him an interloper. Yeah, not a smart idea. I and mean, you're surprised when he fucking decks you. I'm like, yeah. you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, although to be fair, Kevin did deck the district attorney. That's true. But and, at least Scott's not going to press charges. Yeah, and, and that, that was... That was funny because, uh, you know, uh, Kevin is, is, you know, whining to uh, to Mac and he's like, you know, and he's like, I'm sorry Felicia didn't tell you because obviously she knew and you clearly didn't know. And Mac's just kind of like, uh, uh, oh, shit. Uh, uh. And it... then and then as Scott is leaving, he's like, you know what? I'm not going to press charges. And you know what, Mac? I'm not going to press charges against you for for. Uh, pun- sucker punching me a few weeks back either. I'm done with both of you. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and then Kevin's like, wait, what the fuck? And then, the, and like, then it comes out that... <laughs> and then Mac... It comes out that Mac knows, and then the two of them, they, they just brawl. They just brawl and completely destroy the floating rib, and then they're... And then it's okay. Yeah, because it's like, you know, those are the kind... That's the kind of friendship they have. It's like, we just duke it out, and Mac's like, oh, I'm sorry, and Doc's like, oh, I know you are. <laughs> Meanwhile, at, at the Metro Court, Bobby comes out and she starts railing on Lucy, and then and they and it gets into a wordplay with them. Meanwhile, the press is over here. Yeah, there are a couple of reporters like taking pictures, and they um, was it? At, didn't Lucy slap Bobby? I, I or was it the other way around? One of them slapped the other, caught on yeah. camera. They started catfighting. And it's just all sorts of like like slut shaming going around, which ugh, yeah, I, I can I can do without slut shaming. But at any rate, you know they're fighting, and, and the reporters are like, "Oh God, we're going to print this, and this is going to be great tomorrow." And Felicia's like, "No, you're not." They're like, "Oh yeah," and she ends up selling like one of her family heirlooms just to have the camera to delete all those pictures. Yeah, was which like, was a really sweet of her. She's like, "These are real Aztec jewels or something like that." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because, hey, Felicia is legitimately an Aztec princess, so there you go. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and Lucy is super grateful because basically her point was, you know, if this ends up on the front page tomorrow, that's going to humiliate Kevin even more, and he doesn't deserve that. Yeah, which, good on her. You know, I mean, I can't feel too bad for Lucy. Well, I can feel a little bad for Lucy when because of everything that of how everything happened. Yeah, but I, I feel more ire towards Scott because Lucy, yeah, to her credit, she is trying to say she's trying to say, look, look, Scott, no, no, yeah, fuck off, Scott, no. And so you know, so it, it, she she has her own blame because she's the one who started the affair with him in the first place. But after it ended, it's like I can't, you know, it's not as much, at least not as yeah. much as as Scott. Because Scott is just – it's its like the, throughout the majority of the time I've seen him on General Hospital and on Port Charles, it's like he's went from like two or three different women. He hasn't slept around with the entire town as far as I know. Like I, I think when he first came on the show, it was Laura, mm-hmm. and I th- want to say he had a romance with someone else at some point. Um, but eventually one of them was, was Lucy for a little bit. Um, one of them was Dominique, which who is the mother of his daughter, and the daughter that uh, Lucy was a surrogate of. Okay. And then he's all he also well oh he also that's the other woman from before Bobby. He hooked up with Bobby before. There was one one nurse on Port Charles. Uh, I think her name was Eve. I I think he had hooked up with her. I think that might have been Doc at one point, but you know he, he... And apparently Heather Weber at some point. Yeah. Heather Weber, because hi Franco. Yeah. <laughs> How's my high club, buddy? <laughs> retcon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, magic of retcon. You gotta love it. Uh, so Scott hasn't really gotten around as much as some of these other characters have. 
Oh, but um, but to kind of kind of start wrapping up a little bit because we are we are definitely over time. But you know what? It's there's, the fucking nurses' ball. There's so much to talk about. Let's see. Okay, so, uh, so let's see. Big things. Um, Julian. Yeah. Julian, after spending the night with Alexis, he, he's he's basically come to the decision to say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to step out of the mob. I'm just going back away from it. I'm getting the fuck out of here. You know, and Alexis encourages him to do this, and in order, and she even tries to help him by calling Rick over under false pretenses, which she admits and she apologizes for <laughs> he, uh, several times, and tries to convince Rick to let him out of the mob. And Rick is like, uh, no, because I can't do that because I'm not bankrolling him. Yeah. And, and, and then she looks at him. She realizes, shit, he's right. <laughs> but who is? Well, that happens to be... Mr. Lukey boy. Yeah. Who, of course, he's at first like, oh, I can't let you do that, you know, and, and it's starting to be all rough and tough. But then eventually well, he he does let Julian go. But... Well, and, and Julian, Julian is like, you know, why do you still want me? You don't need me. You have ELQ now. Uh, you, you've outgrown my shell, you know, my companies that you're using to launder your money, you know, you have Jordan to deal your drugs. You don't need me. Plus, by the way, I know who you really are, and I know where all your skeletons are buried. So basically, don't fuck with me. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so with that, they shake hands and they walk. And then Luke walks right on over to Alexis's house with a gun. Friday cliffhanger. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> And it's like, dude, if you shoot her, you are going to be reawakening a feud that you do not want to be reawakening. Did Fake Luke even do his homework? God damn it. Fake Luke seems very impulsive and stupid. Um, yeah, real Luke, well, he, he might have been impulsive here and there, but not really that stupid. Yeah, well, real Luke also would never bring drugs into Port Charles, no matter how much money he wanted. Yeah, just no. He, there are different ways to get that money in. Um, oh, so yeah. And so, and so meanwhile, uh, Duke and Sonny have managed to find out when the next shipment of drugs is coming in. And uh, Sonny has Duke take that information to Anna. And basically Anna's like, you know what, okay, if I take your information and I'm able to put uh, Julie and Jerome behind bars, you had to quit working for Sonny. And I'm sitting here going, didn't he already say, didn't Duke already say that's what he was going to do? Yeah, so it's like, like you, you kind of moot point there. You know, like, like, I was I was confused about her, like, making that, that demand, because I'm like, that was what he already told you. He was, like, you're acting like it's an ultimatum. He already told you the only reason he's working for Sonny is to get rid of Julian Jerome, and then he'll be done. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but whatever. What do I know? Yeah, but hey, maybe maybe she just wanted. Maybe she was reminding him and making it clear. Maybe I don't know. Uh... And uh, Jordan is yeah. Jordan is the one uh, coordinating the shipment, and uh, TJ actually overhears her making a phone call talking about the product from Colombia. Yeah, and and he's a little savvy about it. He's like, uh, I know of only one thing that comes from Colombia, and that that's kind of druggish. Yeah. But she's uh, she covers her ass enough, I guess. Yeah. At least enough to get TJ off of her tail after buying him, especially after buying him a new car. Yeah, it's a graduation she, gift. Gift. It's what, like when she pulled out that you know keys to give him as a graduation present. I'm like, Jordan, you fucking idiot. Like, talk about tipping your goddamn hand. Just a little she's, bit. She's, she's like, I got a big commission at work. And I'm like, you really think Sean is going to buy that? Sean is not stupid. And, you know, Sean has been suspecting that she's running the drug operation this whole time. And she is, you know, done a pretty good job of at least trying trying to get him to doubt mm-hmm. that conclusion but when you flaunt the money you're making like that, I'm that's just stupid. And, uh. Oh, he's just God damn it. 
And, so and they had and they had a small bonding moment the previous night too. Yeah. It was like, aw. Jordan almost looked like she was flirting with Sean. Yeah. So I was like, um. <sighs> Which, whatever. Yeah. Um, Which maybe act- they'll tell more. But. Maybe. Oh, that actually does remind me. There was one musical number I neglected to mention. The Haunted Starlets. Oh, yeah. Doing uh, I love it. Yeah, it was It was Sam. It was Sam, Molly. Sam, Molly, I think Lulu. Lulu, Maxie, and Kiki. Yes. And Sam walked out there in her outfit. I'm like, oh, my God, yes. Yeah, exactly. And it was kind of—it was so funny because uh, you know Levi, he he went there. He took Maxie to the ball just to make her happy, even though he did not want to be there. And uh, like he was not happy when Lulu came up and asked Maxie to be part of their number because someone had backed out. But he kind of gritted his teeth, and Maxie was having the time of her life up there. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because she was like, uh, you know, Lulu was trying to talk to her because Maxie was like, I don't know the steps. And Lulu's like, it's really easy. Just follow along. And like, they did a really good job of making it look like that's exactly what Maxie was doing because she was just like a heartbeat behind everybody else. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I think I was paying too much attention to Sam to notice, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, holy shit, Sam. Ah. Yes. Uh, so yeah, um, oh god, what else, um... But yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to hit that little plot point about the nurse's ball, and we, we got the results of the test back. The embryo is definitely Dante and Lulu's. Which, I, I don't, I want to know how the hell they, they did that test. Like, is the embryo big enough that they can take a DNA sample? Like, I don't understand how you would test the DNA of an embryo without destroying it. I'm not sure. I, I guess maybe they had found a way that we just don't realize, or maybe it's just... Oh. Or maybe it's just magic science! <laughs> magic TV science! Science is awesome! Yay! Uh, but, and then of course the question for a surrogate, and Lulu's like, what if I carry it? Which I just want to, I'm sorry, I want to smack her in the head. That made me so angry because she's like, I've been looking into surgeries and stuff I could do. And then she makes an appointment for a consultation uh, without talking to Dante first. And I'm like, okay, you know, and, and Dante, to his credit, is like, you know, we have one shot at this. Do we really want to take that risk? And Lulu's like, well, after everything that happened with Maxie, I don't want to trust a surrogate. And I'm like... That's why you hire someone reliable. Yeah, just... My God, like, like, I don't know. Lula really is starting to piss me off because she's so self-centered and so impulsive. You know, when, when Ben was... Or, excuse me, Rocco. Wow. <laughs> still hate that name. Uh, you know, when Obrecht had had him... And, you know, Britt was trying to help. And, you know, Lulu knew better than to run into the interrogation room. But she did it anyway, partly because the police department sucks, but also because she's stupid. And it never occurred to her that maybe she shouldn't be able to do everything she wants to do at any particular moment. Then there was when, you know, the police went to go get him. And she damn near went in and tried to stick her nose into that. And here she is. It's like, I, I want the feeling of having our child inside me. Me. It's all about me. I want to do this. This is important to me. And I'm like, you got one fucking shot. It should be about the baby, not about you, you stupid bitch. <laughs> and it, because it's like, you know what? The doctors told you that you can't carry a baby to term. Yeah. Fucking accept that. You that is not something you fuck around with when you have one shot. Yeah, this, this is yeah, yeah. Uh, to her credit, she is doing research behind it. There's some sort of surgery or whatever. So but, at, at the very but, least she's not going in like balls blind or anything. But she's super determined and she's wrong. You know, yeah. I don't know I don't know where like I don't know what 
is going to happen in soap opera land where things just work out the way the writers want it to work. So I don't know what's going to happen. But in the real world, like, that would be fucking stupid. Yeah, it would. Oh. You know, you, you, you have, you know, it's not a guarantee that the embryo would implant no matter who they put it in. Mm-hmm. But you know what? You have a much better. There are there are professional surrogates out there. They come with references. They you know they come through agencies. They are dependable. They have you know they have records of you know couples that they have you know you know carried babies for before. Like th- this exists. You don't you you can you can hire someone. You draw up a legal contract. Which is something I don't I don't even know what happened to Maxie. Um, you know, you don't and you don't have to rely on your super flake of a friend. You know, you do it professionally, and like that's what you do if you want to do it right, and you have one shot. Yeah. Oh dear. But as as things do go, this is about the end of the show too. To end, to end on Lulu being being selfish and, and stupid. <laughs> oh, so, so this was a little obviously over time because hey, it's <laughs> fucking nurses ball. We 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 have to cram that into one show because it's just that great. Although yeah. I really hope that next year's nurses ball they will actually keep it, you know, during the same week and not spread it out over the weekend. And I hope they don't cock tease us like they did this year. Thank you, fuckers. Ah. Although I, if they were going to uh, do that, I did love that they they did the 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 Friday uh, cliff cliffhanger uh, on a row of butts that say nurses ball. Like that was that was pretty <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, there you go. That's the way you end the week right there. <laughs> All right, so with that, we are going to get out of here. Uh, where can we find you, Namio? You can find me on Tumblr, uh, Namio's Corner. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. You can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. And you can find me on Etsy at, at Namio Stained Glass. What? And you can find me on the social medias at gomer 21 X on the Twitters and the, and the Tumblers. And you can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. You can also find this show on my other two podcasts, Thespian Talk and Constructive Deconstruction on iTunes. Just type in the show names and you'll, they'll, they'll come up. And also, if you like this show, if you like the shows that I do and you want to help toss a little bit of money on it for production costs, new equipment, equipment upkeep, website upkeep, that sort of thing, I do have a Patreon page, patreon.com backslash gomer21xx. So, uh, so, yes, so uh, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.